So let's welcome uh, Hugo from Workday, a senior site reliability engineer. So stage is yours. Okay, not promoted. I'm principal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I got promoted just before the conference. Uh, so hello, everyone. I'm Hugo from uh, Workday. Uh, Jan sadly could not be here. He had a problem with a courier delivering his passport with the visa. So I got all the fun in this snack. So here's the um, agenda. What is uh, Workday Private Cloud? Uh, OpenStack at Workday because we are uh, heavily used on OpenStack. Uh, Kubernetes on the platform on the OpenStack. Then how we leverage Zoo to build the Kubernetes on top of OpenStack and test everything together because we are a fuller gapped environment. And that's a hell of fun because there's no internet. So. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> and questions. So Workday is a HR company. If you don't know or ever heard about it, we are on the 500 uh, companies. We support uh, the more than 60 million customers, and we have a huge satisfaction. Uh, Workday Private Cloud is the team that manages the OpenStack cluster in the um, uh, Workday, where most of the platform runs. We are composed of two development scrum and one SRE team. Uh, we have 99% uh, of uh, API calls as hello uh, for uh, OpenStack. We have uh, more than 132 clusters, 6 million vCores, 22 petabytes of RAM, uh, 99K current VMs, and 247K VMs recreated every week with a really, really low failure rate. I talk really fast, so if you want me to repeat, raise your hand. <laughs> So OpenStack at Workday, it's uh, the fifth generation of OpenStack. We run specialized workloads, mainly in memory. Uh, we have uh, OpenStack where we build a team for uh, the images for our teams. It's an external service that builds. The lifecycle tool, it's internally for us. The lifecycle management of the VMs is not under us, it's uh, external. And the capacity for cast is us, it's internal. So everyone knows data center capacity. It involves like two engineers, a lot, a lot of managers and bills. And takes forever to land. So we need to forecast that really, really well. And we think integrate with a lot of other services at work day, like monitoring, logging, uh, security, and a lot of other stuff that you require in the data center. Kubernetes at Workday, it's uh, heavily used. We have a lot of things that uh, uses really well, but in the private cloud, it's fairly new because of the air-gapped problem. So when you say, hey, deploy Kubernetes, it's all fun. And you say, oh, you don't have internet, and everyone runs away because doing stuff with air-gapped, it's a pain. So why is it? Bootstrapping. So Zoo, it's really fun, really well. We have a lovely talks that everyone explains that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and so we target virtual machines for um, simulate the environment that the SRU will build the first management cluster, similar to the Mirant talk that we have the management cluster, then other clusters that schedules. So that's the first one. So SREs has the familiarity to, to create that because they run and target the things. So we simulate the usage of the SRE when we are creating and deploying the cluster locally. We own border service takes time, so everything is integrated to a Zoo CI pipeline. And Zoo merges that really well. The merger is awesome, so it makes the life of multiple repos really easy. So how it works. We have different stages, and as I told you, it's our gift. So we have the config that defines what a Kubernetes cluster is for our customers. So every customer has a different type of cluster. They have different VMs that they need, different capacities, different ranges of ciders of subnets that they need for accessing edges. We have image builder that we need to build with the latest patch of security, and that needs to be our gift. So we need to test that with the edge public internet, then we need to propose a merge. We need to test that. We need to merge. We need to test that again. And then we need to publish to the data center where there's no internet and test that again. So thank you, Zoo. We have the bootstrap, then we do auto deploy. We test and we test again 
we don't only test creating the cluster, but we test workloading in the cluster. We test upgrading in the cluster at the same time. Because when we do Kubernetes, we go for a version 1, 29 to 30. There's breaking chains. We need to ensure that the Helm chart that people is using on us doesn't have a breaking chain. Because when we deliver that, we break them. So we cannot. So we go there and say, hey, deploy everything. We pack everything together. We test the cluster. We upgrade the cluster, ensure that everything is running. And then we allow the people to merge. We hook up every stage in a simple naming framework. And I'll talk about uh, a little bit of that. So everyone knows about the zoo job definition. We have presentations about it. Really easy. So we have uh, the setup infra that goes there and prepares the, the cluster as I'm building a brand new cluster every single day. Why brand new? Because once the cluster is running, the upgrade is the next step. But every time I need to test a new region, our new cluster that I need to build in a brand new environment. So every time I ensure that I go from zero to 100 and I go to steps. From there, I run the all in one job that executes the tasks that I need to create the first pre-admin cluster, promote that, cl create a cluster that's the management cluster, promote the management cluster to a real cluster, then create cattle clusters, test every Helm chart in the Helm clusters, upgrade all the clusters, and start destroying everything again, and we start over. And we gather the logs. And then we start facing the forest issues. So zoo job container, it's the executor, it merges. We have the build sets, everything, simple zoo, nothing to talk about there. So we set the environment in the pre-run and the post-run to ensure that every consistent work that we do is the same in the environment. So what's all, all our post-run? It's always the same one that uh, our SREs will run against our fully running cluster to ensure that the cluster is healthy. Same way that our pre-run is the same one that our SRE will run when it's deploying the pre-work in the, the new data center or the new region to ensure that it's deployable, our OpenStack uh, Kubernetes cluster. Because we need Octavia configured in a specific way. We need the Subnets configured in a specific way on our networking. So there's the wind have the flavors and we have all the things that uh, we got lovely talks about it that we had we managed and we need to ensure that they are there in the specific order of creation to ensure that Kubernetes can land. So one other problem that we had and uh, that's uh, I was talking with James before and that's because we use a little bit old version of Zoom <laughs> is um, we have a problem on the way that we, sometimes the change that's in flight is not the change that we want to test at a specific moment. So some of our tasks ensures that uh, if it's you are uh, part of the zoo product dependency, you pull from the source code as zoo does the dependence leaking. If you are not, you pull from the source branching in the URL. It means that you got tested somewhere else but I ensure that every time that I'm testing something, I'm testing the way that the production engineering, the SREs are using to deploy, and not only the way that CI runs. Because sadly, the, the way that we sometimes deploy in the air gap environment, there are huge gaps between what the CD in the engineering um, uh, side works and the way that the customer data center works. For example, I cannot run an Ansible in the data center without a bastion. And running a bastion is horrible. Sometimes I don't have the, everything that I need. So there's a lot of uh, chaining that I need to ensure that when I run the same environment, I'm testing same path codes with a slightly change as possible. And triggers on depends on. So if you have a code that runs in the branch, if you put the triggers on depend on, it lands on the first case and Zoo fix the problem for me. So Zoo, as I said, Zoo in the CD is different. We sadly cannot run Zoo on the CD because we cannot link the environment. So they are fully splitted, fully air gapped. So to access the data center, it's a totally different monster. So to do similar work, the 
when the, la the user, the SRE, runs, it runs generally for his laptop in a v virtual environment that goes to a bastion and triggers from the bastion on a uh, work box, and from the work box it triggers workloads. So what we did, we simulate similar behavior on Zoo to testing. So we create two VMs on Zoo. One VM we explicitly call it laptop. So when people look at it and say, oh, what is that? Oh, that's the laptop. This is where the executor runs from. So the Zoo executor executes Ansible code on the laptop. It's a bad pattern, I know, but it runs Ansible in Ansible. <laughs> and uh, from that, it triggers the uh, the other VM that's the targetable where it installs all the Kubernetes requirements to build the first kind cluster for cluster API, bootstrap the first node, creates a Kubernetes cluster, promotes, and promotes again. Then we had the problem. So as is Zansible and Ansible, Zoo has an amazing way to log in the, the data. Zoo has the full path that analyzes the Ansible logs and put in code. But when you run Ansible in Ansible, you kind of lose that feature. And even in the image builder that uh, the community for Kubernetes provides, because you are running uh, a job in Zoo that triggers a packer that runs a Ansible inside of a ISO. So that Ansible there, you don't have the logs in the nice Zoo way. So what we did, we instrumented ARA ARA logs for Ansible inside of our Zoo job. So if we zoo, uh, if we Ansible in Ansible, we have that Ansible logs are part of our artifactory as a link in the zoo job, so we can go there, detail it, and troubleshoot all the issues from the other tasks. So we see zoo failed in the task that does the deploy. The deploy is Ansible code. We have the link for the ARA. We check that and say it's exactly which task it failed, and exactly as it fails, it's not as nice as zoo, but uh, works in a similar way. In summary, we have the install dependencies that uh, installs cluster CTL, cluster API, kind, Docker, configures networking, all the things that you require to do the first box. We configure everything we set up. We bootstrap the first node, then we deploy. The deploy promotes a new cluster and also upgrades a cluster, depending on what operation you are doing. We test everything. So we check if the Helm Shark that we applied as a custom resource is running. We do check if the Cilium networking that we run is uh, available. If the Cilium test networking that Cilium provides has communication. We deploy the security tools. We ensure that the workload can run with the security tools because sometimes security applies a new patch and it breaks the application because it removes permissions. So we need to ensure that that's not breaking us. So we run that. We run the logging, ensure that our logging tool has communication with the main logging system from Workday and sends the Workday logs back to, to the platform. And once everything of that is done, we go there and say, hey, you are flagged to promote. And then the promote writes a commit for us, a proposal in Garrett. And once we merge that, it runs everything again, merges, and that's how we use it in production. So the path looks really slow, but actually it takes like a one hour to test the three iterations of UPI grades. It's quite fast in, in the overall. But it ensures that every time that we do a update, a patch update in the image, in the code, in cluster API, in Kubernetes itself, uh, a Helm chart, a Cilium version, cert manager, everything that we do a step, we ensure that we test all the jumps that we need to ensure that in production we can do a upgrade, we can do a create, and we can move uh, the data forward. And that's really hard in the overall when we have air gapped because the air gap needs to ensure that you have promoted everything, that every configuration that you added to your cluster API is pointing to the right artifactory in the right region that you want to test, that every credential that you are accessing for the air gap, it's fine. So Zoo ensures to us that we, we can consolidate everything in one, and when Zoo says, hey, the cluster is fine, it means that we tested every scenario possible 
to deploy our cluster in either region that we have in Ansh and scale how many nodes do we need and scale down with no problems. We have the post job that uh, the, the gather logs and we have a job, uh, generator job. Uh, why do we have a generator job? Because sometimes we do changes and that requires things that breaks, like Octavia. And Octavia, when it breaks, it's a pain to clean. So we had to write some uh, cleanup jobs afterwards to ensure that we are not letting resources allocated on OpenStack due to problems on cluster API. So if we do something and cluster API gets hanged, it will never delete the cluster. So it will time out the zoo job and the resources will be left scattered. So we cannot left the, have the zombie processes because they use computation resources. That's not the problem. The problem is mainly the networking side. Uh, Workday doesn't use uh, overlay. We use uh, BGP to the host. So our networking is specifically finite. So I need to go there and ensure that uh, if uh, the cluster API failed, I go there and out the resources that could be created by cluster API and target those and clean up those. So I need to remove security group, remove Octave, remove the listener, remove the pool, remove the VMs. The only thing that it will not mainly remove, unless you are building an image, is the image. But if it's an image in flight, we also delete the broken image to ensure that we are not testing that again because that image will break the cluster and we'll go to the janitor case. So a win one maps our actual scenario. Uh, it reduces a lot the drift when we need to have different things working on. Someone is working in the image builder to add a new uh, CSI uh, hardening while someone else is working on upgrading uh, cluster API. So two different things that need to be working together in both stages. They need to be tested uh, back compatibility and forward compatibility. So this reduces a lot of the drift for us. Uh, so uh, the all in one is a boilerplate that we can add to any job that we add to the dependency. So we ensure that uh, we if we create a new project that's dependency that needs to create a new cluster and test the whole scenario again, we can just go there and plug and play. And it will do all the jobs ensuring that uh, if we have something in the fly, it will test the retro and the future. It will merge everything to get consolidated and put it forward. And we try to reduce the image builder uh, problems with uh, uh, the, when it's sent up, because when you promote an image, if the image is the way that it is, you don't tag it with the build or something you create every time that you recheck the image, you keep creating new versions, new versions, so ensure that we have a, a way to, to clean up those. Uh, in the future, we are trying to break more these steps to make it more flexible in the overall but keeping the same consistency that we have now to ensure that we have all these stages tested in the same way so we ensure that we don't have gaps and drifts in the overall when we deploy in the cluster, mainly because of the air gap. If we didn't have to build everything mostly ourselves, things would be much easier, but everything needs to be brought inside, built it, published to our internal artifactory and released again, so we need to ensure that we can reproduce that always. And so the use zoo requires and provides to pick up artifacts from other projects, something that we are looking at it at the moment. And more smaller jobs to, to ensure that we don't have a waste of resources. And that's mainly me because I talk really, really, really fast. So I have a lot of time for questions. So. <laughs>